baby goat. Kid. They call him kid. Kid, yeah. yeah nice job. Rama breed. Ceramas when they're grown. No, 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 no. No, no, no. So his name is Tango. And he is uh, 13 years old. And then uh, he is a dwarf rabbit. Whereas all the other ones around you are Flemish giants, California ducks. Busy already. And then this is what it looks like. Let me see. So the idea is to push their nose up against this. And then it pumps up more water as it needs, which is kind of cool. All right, so guess which animals can work the pump? The sheep, yes or no? No. Horse, yes, yes or no? Yes? Wait. Bison? Yes. yes. Cow, that's a cow. Okay, so now. What's this, sheep? No. Bison, yes. Horse, yes and no. Some horses don't like it. That's wow, 32% of Canadians lived on a farm in 1931. Interesting. Due April 20th, okay. He has his stomachs. So, cow has four stomachs, and that's. Point to the stomachs. Oh, that's one. Oh, one in front of that. Yeah, but that's okay. One in front of that, one behind it, and then. Oh, and then those are other. The other three are compartments for ruminating or chewing. Their. Is it ruminating? Yeah. Can I see your? Can you watch your head for a second? This is the write-up. Digesting by ruminating. So it's just oh, an automatic there's... filler. So okay. There's one there. Oh, I see. Um, so they just press their nose. Oh, they each have their own. Okay. Um, or not see, necessarily. Some of, them might some of them share. Share? Like because they're right beside each other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it automatically fills as soon as they press their nose on it. Oh, okay. Um, so there's never like a shortage of water. Oh, but yeah, you press this and water comes out. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we had seen a version of this, but it was related to like containing it inside a well for winter feeding outside okay um and some one of the other exhibits out here but this one is electronic it's just like tap water that comes through there and yep. then, yeah and then they just press lightly on it yep yeah so cool. they, uh, they'll drink like at least a bathtub full of water a bathtub a day Each wow one. yeah wow yeah. do you know how much milk it says on the sign that they used to eat that they make, they produce about 33 liters of milk a day, a, a day right? Yes. So the Depending on the, the yeah, age. Yeah, the average for the Holstein has gone up. So it's actually 36 liters. Oh, wow. On so how did it go Holstein. up? Like, how did they manage to make it go from 33 to 36 even? So even in the, I think it was like the 50s or the 70s, okay. um, the average for Holstein is like 25 liters. Okay. Um, so it's gone up. A lot, a lot of it is through... Like selection okay. of cows for breeding because they're artificially intended. Okay. Yeah. 
um, so they can choose, you know, who has the best genetics to be the healthiest cows. Right. Um, Do these cows get some sort of uh, injections to produce more milk? Like hormone injections or? It is not legal in Canada. Okay. Yeah. I, I'll, in any fashion? Like food, in their food or in injection by injection? No, or in the like. states, yes. Yeah. So um, I'm that's just saying, like the so, big thing, like with yeah. Monsanto, was yeah. that they created the artificial hormone which they give their cows, so their right, cows on average more milk produce than like that. sixty liters. Oh wow. Um, in Canada, it is not legal. To okay. Have so the way that they produce production. more now than they did in the 1900s is just mechanics, like just the machines and maybe working them a little more than they were worked before and genetics yeah so probably like big thing is like genetics in their environment so cows like how while they produce milk it's like 75 percent is based off of their environment so do they have water do they have exercise do they have good food do okay. they have good space um do these cows go outside yes okay that's good yeah and there's also um it's called proaction uh, mm -hmm. for Ontario so they have kind of like dairy breed standards so there's like a minimum standard of how often the cows need to go outside what size space do they need to have um, and they'll come in and you'll get fined um, oh, okay if you don't follow, follow the minimum rules. requirements yeah, you get investigated uh, so in the yeah, uh, winter time uh, the cows go outside in the barnyard oh, okay. uh, because they are not acclimatized to be so they just go for a little while outside in the winter? Yeah, because oh. the ice and stuff too, we don't want them to fall, get hurt. Right. It's pretty hard to get up a 1,800 oh, yeah. pound cow for sure. if they fall on the ice. Um, so they're just going out here okay. um, in the spring. So normally the weather, like starting soon, probably mm -hmm. like end of April or May, um, they'll start going outside again. Okay. Um, and so they go outside at 5 o'clock when the museum closes until 6 in the morning. Oh, they go outside in the, from the spring all the way through to the fall? Yeah, and then depending on uh, weather, so like last okay. year it was super mild, so they were out even in November. Like we oh. such a mild. Oh, okay, so they go outside and then come inside in the in the daytime. Oh, yeah. I see, that's neat. For these dairy cows. Here. So yeah. these are all Holsteins? Do you have any we, other types? We you have, do. You have Jersey cows? We do. So oh, okay. on, in this last quarter uh, oh, okay. here, yeah. we have um, Brown, Swiss, Ayrshire, Jersey. We have Canadians, okay, um, and so that's a good example. Like uh, they the produce Canadian. less milk, right? Yes, so but like, it's like creamier milk, right? Is it uh, Jersey, Jersey milk? Yes, same Jersey thing with cow. brown milk. Okay. So even like the Canadian cow. So that was a cow that was, you know, bred when the settlers came. Oh, um, I never heard of that one. Dual purpose. Okay. Breed, so Meat she, and dairy. Yeah. Oh, so like you know, Canadian. you think of like small uh, pioneers or home setters. Yeah. So they, they weren't looking for, you know, a large milk production. Yeah, yeah. They don't see it for meat. So they only produce about 10 liters of milk, which is very a similar day. to beef cows. Oh, beef okay. Beef cows only produce about 10 liters of milk. Too. Okay, so, so is it different quality milk? Or would you just, couldn't so they just the, have a beef cow and maybe? Uh, yeah, they could. All the different uh, breeds will have slight variations of, of their fat and, butter fat and protein, depending on their breed. Okay. Um, so, but this is a good example, like, you know, the Canadian cow has been around. This is a Canadian? Early, this one right here. Okay. Now, since the early 1900s, but she was not bred specifically for milk production. So you see she's wider, she's a bit okay. more muscly, um, and she was not bred for milk, right? The whole seeds were really bred for milk, sorry, and not early 1900s for the milk. Were they bred for milk? Oh, right there's here. Jersey, okay. Um, so typically for, um, that's your milk, like for cheese, just because they have higher, and that's higher fat. Like fat, yeah. yeah. Um, but they produce less than 20 liters if they're average as well. Okay. Um, but they're kind of smaller, a little bit lower. Yeah, shorter. Shorter, yeah, shorter. Even at, the, like, the angles of their feet, are they more or less likely to get sick? Okay, or really? Interesting. Smaller bone in the chest, which means they don't have um, wide lung capacity, which means they're more likely to get pneumonia. Right. Are they able to have a bigger stomach, which means they're able to Do you produce look enough for energy. higher swinging, like not here maybe. So I mean we like we are a working like we 
producers use nowadays? They would have an even bigger system oh, okay. that's more efficient than this and would be less likely to lead to breakage. So oh, this okay. is kind of like an in-between one and then there's a newer technology that exists. Um, it starts off as a fruit on a tree. So this is a cocoa tree and these are cocoa pods. So it's the fruit that it makes, kind of like an apple tree makes apples. Uh, but instead of it being like an apple, we want to eat the skin and leave the seeds. The other way around, we want to leave the seeds. The skin and eat the seeds. So when we cut it open, we see that there will be about 20 or 30 big cocoa seeds inside of it. Um, so those have to be fermented and dried. So because they're growing top of the trees, they can spread them out in the sun like this. And the sun will dry them pretty quickly. And you get your dried cocoa seeds like this. And we don't really still want the hull that's around the outside, but we want the inside. Uh, so that's cocoa mix, which looks like this. Um, and you guys are going to try some in a second. So is that it crushed up? Like just after the skin's peeled off? Yeah, it's, skin's peeled off and that's what cocoa nips are. Okay. Yeah, so it looks like this. Um, and it's got like a very dark, intense chocolate flavor. And so what they do in the factories is, is they crush them. So they press them, press them, and that makes all of the fat that was stirred up by the sheet come out. And that makes cocoa butter. Which is this. So this doesn't have a lot of flavor, but it's got a really nice smooth texture. And the leftover, once the fat is out, is cocoa powder. So when you're a chocolate maker, you're going to mix these two together, um, depending how dark you want your chocolate. So if you just want white chocolate, you'll take just cocoa butter and you'll mix it with milk and sugar. So white chocolate still comes from the same plant as regular chocolate. It just doesn't have the cocoa powder that gives a lot of the chocolate flavor in it. So if you wanted milk chocolate, then you would add in cocoa powder to your chocolate mix. Um, and if you wanted really dark chocolate, you would put in a lot of cocoa powder. So like 85% chocolate is 85% yes. this stuff. The last step is to send it through a conch, which is this big machine here. So it goes through when it's melted, and it grinds it really fine into particles so small your tongue can't feel them. And that's why chocolate feels so smooth in your mouth. Like if you ever have kind of cheap Dollarama chocolate that feels kind of gritty, then through the crunch for long enough. Whereas Lindor chocolate spends really long time smooth. in there, yeah. it gets very, very smooth. 